Hello, welcome everyone to to our talk. We are <coughs> sorry. We we will talk about uh, something really interesting, I think, in every kind of product that is putting something in production. But in our in our experience, uh, when we put in something in production using big data technologies, the w the most tricky part was putting in a security environment. Why? Because all of these big data technologies aren't thinking uh, for for security purposes. They accomplish, but not thinking about it. And put this all all of these together is kind of kind of hard. So this will be the the index that we will uh, follow for this for this presentation. Uh, we begin with a little a brief uh, presentation about ourselves and and our company and more importantly in our product. Later, Marcos will explain the particular use case that we are going to put in production, and then I start to talk with the first use case that we have to to. <coughs> to accomplish, that is uh, the fusion of uh, Spark, Kerberos, and Mesos. Uh, later, we call uh, we have to to tell how can how can we manage the sharing of all the secret of the of the platform, or that we call in Stratio dynamic authentication. Later, Marcos is, uh, will explain another kind of of uh, system authorization, like this mutual TLS, and a very tricky. Data store that uh, that use this TLS that is that will be Postgres and I will end it explaining the last uh, of our layer of our security layer that is the network isolation and if we uh, all goes well we want to show you a live demo cross fingers please and if we have time we will answer all of for your question so let me uh, let me begin with the presentation uh, my name is Jorge Lopez Maya. I have been in the in the computer and the software development world since I think uh, eight nine years ago, and more focusedly in the in the big data world since the last uh, six years. As you can see from my skills, my primary skill is Spark. I have been involved in the in the Spark development since the last last five years, and since I go I entered in Stratio uh, three years ago. I started working with Spark over over Mesos, and I let Marcos introduce himself. Hey guys, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Marcos. As you can see, uh, I'm younger than Jorge, so well, that's pretty uh, obvious. And I've been working in this world for five years, and my main uh, skills are tooling. I like Docker. I like background. I got everything that let me hack something, and uh, testing framework, which is the the last point, and well, since the last year, I've been working with, a lot with DCOS, Scala, and Spark. I'm a Spark committer, so well, I, I like to work with these guys, and I'm more in the QA side, testing performance and so on. So, so after the presentation of Marcos, uh, I, I would to introduce our company. We both work for Stratio. It's a startup that uh, is based in Spain, in Madrid. And the purpose of Stratio is a company's business on the journey through the digital, the complete digital transformation. And how can we accomplish all of this? Using our amazing product that is right here, that as you can see, or if you don't see, I will, put, I will point it of you with a laser. That is based mainly in DCOS, the data-centric operating system powered by Mesos, that all of you will know. And if not, we'll ask the Mesos people that is uh, outside. And as you can see, for all the all the all the Spark logos, Spark is all the is the or sorry <coughs> is our main uh, processing distributed engine. And all of this application or whatever that we launch on inside of platform is using Docker containers. And last but not least, we have a, a very complex uh, uh, security layer that is called StatiusSec. That is is the main or, or main point of access in in our platform. So, Marcos will explain the the use case. Okay, uh, so let's talk about our use case. Uh, well. Uh, to start with something, let's say what's DCOS, okay? DCOS is an open source distributed operating uh, system. 
is based on Apache Mesos kernel, and it's uh, really, really useful for all the things, and the things that make it powerful as hell is like you have a network layer, which is really, really, really good, a service discovery, and resource management. You can deploy containers inside, and it's also a, a good thing nowadays. Uh, this is uh, the main DCOS architecture. Uh, I won't explain it. It's in the DCOS documentation. And well, let's talk about our preconditions. We have an important customer that needs everything really, really secured, okay? And the things that they ask it for are mainly, okay, we need user profiling, uh, good user profiling in order to avoid uh, data scientists access things that they don't need to see or whatever people want to see, let's check that they are able to do it. Uh, the access of, to these resources must be done using secure connections from end to end. Uh, end, to end. I mean that if you start uh, the interaction with the cluster with, I don't know, HTTP request, I don't, I don't mind, whatever you imagine, uh, from that point to the GBM or from Python or from whatever, must be secured. Not all the ser services are secured using the same protocol. This is one of the most important things that we need to, to work with because uh, you have Kerberos, you have TLS, you have a lot of ways to secure a service. Clients don't want to manage their secrets. That's another important thing. They want it simple. They want it now, and they want to uh, be isolated from the management of the secrets. And as Jorge said, Spark is in the core of our processing system, so we need to integrate the Spark with all those ideas above. And now Jorge will tell you how we did it with Kerberos and Mesos. So, as we have said before, Spark is our mainly processing uh, distributed engine. So, if all of, if any of you doesn't know, I will introduce you Spark and the love that it has to Mesos. For those that doesn't know, Spark works as a as a Mesos use validation, use case validation, and this is a common on the typical architecture for an Spark any Spark application. We have. Uh, a master-slave uh, architecture with uh, the master will be in a Spark application, the driver program that will run any executor in the, in workers' nodes. <coughs> Sorry, that the executor will be the ones that uh, that really do the the execution uh, mm, <coughs> that will execute the the task inside of his uh, his, his process. All of this is managed by the cluster manager. In our use case, will be Apache Mesos, and uh, if that's a, if for those of you that doesn't know, Spark can be deployed both client in and cluster mode. For experience, all in enterprise uh, environments, only the cluster mode is recommended. Why? Because in client mode, the driver program is running in on or local machines, and if you put something in production, you know that this is this is impossible. You cannot run something in production that running on your machine, your machine and uh, sending something in a, in a cluster environment. So in order to introduce you the, the, <coughs> the functionality of uh, Spark running in, in cluster mode, let me, let me show you an, an animation that show the, all the process that, could, that is done using Mesos as resource manager. First of all, we need another, another services besides uh, uh, Mesos Master and its, and its agent that is called Spark Dispatcher. It's running inside the, the cluster in one of the, of the Mesos agent. In our use case, it's running as a marathon application. So the driver will send a web request to the Spark Dispatcher that will, well, will ask for uh, the Mesos Master to execute the, um, sorry, <coughs> one application. Which application will, will be running? The driver itself. Okay, for you that doesn't know, when when a driver is is registered in in Mesos, is registered is uh, sorry is registered as a uh, Mesos framework. So the driver talks with the Mesos master and started as a scheduler, a Mesos scheduler, and running any executor that it will need it for the for its uh, Spark application lifecycle. The tax is sending from the driver to the executor and will will do this, this magic and read from HDFS or whatever it needed from, from the use case. So, okay, this is good. 
But what happened with we put uh, Spark and and it's DFS inside of platform. That the first point that we have to accomplish is the secure the secure part. For you that doesn't know, all the all the projects that uh, are inside the Hadoop ecosystem or or dependent of it, like mm, Yarn or Map and Reduce or whatever, is using Kerberos as a security protocol. Authentication security protocol. Kerberos is a very complex protocol. It's not the topic of this of this talk. If you want to read something, I I recommend you it because it's it's very tricky, and very very interesting, but it's it's very complex. So, what Kerberos does? Kerberos handles user and system identities. is is quite important the part of system too, <coughs> and it's based in three main concepts. Principal, that is the user or, or the service identity, and that is nothing more than a, than a string. Kitab, that is a file that is the one with the, with a token that that is being used as the as authorization using Kerberos. And one important thing when we running when running something in Hadoop, delegation tokens. As Kerberos is nothing is previous of the big data world, is not seeking for the big data use case and problematic. So if we use directly Kerberos, uh, we we can shut down Kerberos, or what, this is what the people of Horton say to me in, in previous convention. So they, they they do something that is called the Hadoop delegation tokens. This is important well, for for the for the seeking of the company of the of the different data store because with this they they have to say to us that Kerberos is not used. To run in a Spark, o sea, only, it's only used if we run in a Spark with HDFS, not for Cassandra or Elastic or whatever. So we have to do something more. This is going to explain later, but it's important. So what uh, what the Stratio Spark team does? Uh, we uh, integrate all the functionality that is not is not present right now in the in the Apache Spark compilation of of Kerberos in, inside the, the part of Mesos, so we can run in any Spark application running inside Mesos using uh, a Kerberized uh, HDFS. Uh, it is integrated in several in several Spark uh, version, and we we added a new cool functionality that is the impersonification in real time. That is explaining in the Spark is is the that I have uh, talked in this year, but I will put it in uh, animation in order to show you. This is a common use case for Spark. Uh, we will have a, a lifetime uh, Spark context that is not closing at any time, and we want to, to read using several users. So the first one will be user one that want to read the text file A from HDFS. First of all, uh, the driver will start the inter its interaction using Kerberos and obtaining its tokens, okay? And will impersonate user. As you can see, these lines are in black, so it's another user, and the ones that will read from HDFS is in blue. Is the is the the user one that will be read this file. So it will read from the driver, send the task to executor that will start the, its delegation tokens to uh, play with Kerberos and read and write any information from HDFS using its own identity. What happens if the next task of Spark will be running as user 2? If you have any other compilation, you have to put in down your context and, uh, and launch in another one. But with our solution, adding some simple uh, variable to the, to the code, we can use another another use another user. Sorry, this is a cool explanation about it. So, okay, as I have said before, uh, oh, this is the end of the animation. Okay, I have to say before, uh, we have uh, several uh, technologies that will that will run using several concepts of security in in Kerberos with uh, HDFS. Uh, is the kitab, the kitab file that will determine the, the user. Okay. So as we manage a lot of technology, we have to manage a lot of kind of secret from the, uh, if we use HDFS, we have to use uh, kitab. If we use another one like Elastic or whatever, we have to use uh, TLS and we have to store certificate or whatever. So 
what comes what happens when when we realize that that we realize that we need some vault or some whatever some some storage that we keep all of for secret so our study security team integrates a key ms that is a key management system in the statue platform in order to store and manage all of the secret. Uh, this manage is uh, uh, the access of this key MS is, uh, is made using tokens. So we have a question. Okay, we have a secret storage, but how do our process access it in a secure way? Because all of our, as you can see, all of our, our Spark uh, uh, application or whatever is running in a distributed way. So we don't have any control of it. So, uh, to be more specifically, how can, who keeps the key that opens the secret ball? And more graphically, how can we uh, hide the secret, the master key from the bullies that want to obtain it? To, to show you this, this problematic, I want to do another animation. So, explain it what we have done. As I said before, we have a Marson application running inside of cluster and launch a request from a, a Stratios Part Dispatcher. The status part dispatcher launching another agent, and a uh, uh, Spark application comes to the request comes to our Stratio Spark dispatcher with its own application tokens. Right now, this is stored in the metadata volume in order to to obtain the, the metadata of our of our application, and the Stratio Spark dispatcher will launch a Spark driver and will send the application token. As you can see, this is not this is not secure at all, okay? So what three, mm, what three problems we have to face? The application token is waiting in the executor logs because we are using Docker, as I have said before, the only thing, the only way that we can to, to pass any, 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 mm, any argument to our application is via execution variables and is waiting in this log. Uh, also, the sensible information is sent using a no secure transportation layer because we don't have TLS activated in the cluster, and the application token is also waiting in application metadata. What is the result of this? The bullies is still laughing of us. So we have to do something from all of these of this security point of view. What happened right now? That our security teams integrate some cool new feature that when some some application is running using Marathon, it will ask for a secret and, and role ID that will make that uh, will make possible that this application can be logging to our secret vault securely. Okay. And when the Swatio Spark Dispatcher started started its process, uh, <coughs> go to vault and obtain its own token. Why? Because when a Spark application comes to to the Swatio Spark Dispatcher. It doesn't come with a token, right? Like the sample before, it comes from a role that is not sensible information. When we have this role, we returns with a secret uh, and role ID. This secret and role ID is the one that is sent it to the Spark execute uh, Spark driver, and the Spark driver will also do login in the vault and return with the application token. But as I said before, uh, Spark driver also launch uh, any Spark execution. So when the Spark driver detects the, the amount of execution that is going to be launched, it generates something, some new method that is quietly the same that uh, secret ID and role ID, that is the one-time ticket, one-time token, as its name says, they only have one use, and it send it to the from the driver to the executor. Okay, as you can see in this picture. And with this one-time token, we retrieve the, the application token. So what is the result of this, all of, of all of this? that we have a method that in which no sensible information is shared because it's only one-time user or one-time tokens or whatever that can be detected if someone is intervened, uh, someone intervened this token and no sensible information is shared in any metadata. So what is the real thing that our secrets are safe? And if some bullies want to want to install our secret, we cannot, we can, we can put it in jail, so we can put it in, in jail, and this is a some feature, I think. And let's uh, Marcos will explain this part. Well, let's talk about Mutual TLS. As we said, this is another kind of uh, security solution. Uh, when I tried to search for a good picture for this talk, I found this. 
I just searched Hansik, I don't know why. Well, <laughs> this guy everywhere. So let's start by telling what's uh, mutual TLS, okay? Mutual authentication uh, refers to two parties authenticating each other. So it's like, okay, I'm your friend, I know you, you know me. And most big data technologies allows the implementation of this, this protocol, okay? Uh, let's explain briefly this protocol. It's based on two main items. Uh, key store, trust store, well, and uh, of course the parties. We have two parties here, Superman and Batman. So let's check if Superman and Batman are friends or not without seeing the film. Uh, Superman has his, his key store here, which is his ID, and has his trust store, which is the folder where he stores the, his friend's IDs. So um, to start with this, the communication will be something like, and this is the, the handshake, uh, okay, we ha I have a key store, I'm Superman, I send you my ID, you as Batman rely on me, do you have my ID in your friend's folder? Yeah, I have. Here is my key store, do you have it in your trust store? Yeah, so the communication can begin, okay? And as you look for TLS on Wikipedia, you will find this, that makes really sense. Is as it requires provisioning of the certificates to the client and involves less user-friendly experience, is rarely used in end-user applications. That means that our curl sent to, from the user to the dispatcher will be hard to understand if we need to introduce some kind of secret. But even this makes sense, at the Stratio, we think different. We say, okay, by default, my users, most users are not used to play with big data things. So let's do as easy as we can and hack something with that TLS thing. We need to handle that in order to be really, really easy. And that's a huge challenge, okay? As you can see, this is an example of a driver, okay? Using our distribution. That means that the only thing that you need to do to run a driver using a TLS data store is get that variables from your Spark configuration and this will populate some values or variables in order to make that magic happen. How? Well, as Jorge has explained, I won't tell about uh, dynamic authentication and so on. And let's run a Spark application. It will go to the Stratio Spark Dispatcher. Uh, this, was run a, this will run a Spark driver that will go to Bolt and get a row token. The, the, the format will be base64 or whatever, I don't know. Okay, we have different methods to parse depending on the secret. Uh, and with this raw secret, we have some classes to generate the proper secrets. The, the, the secrets are generated inside the GBM, so are not exposed to the Docker container, are not exposed to the logs, are not exposed anywhere. We control everything here. And the secrets are proposed as paths. So. The user can't access to the oh, to the proper secret. He can only refer to the path in order to be used in a TLS protocol. This happens. Then driver gets the token and send the one-time token to the executor, and the executor does the same trick because you need to uh, identify yourself as a driver and as an executor in order to access Elasticsearch, Postgres, or whatever TLS data store that you're using. So you could be able to talk with Kafka, with driver and executor. And that's pretty good. The thing that is most important for us is that we have nothing written in the uh, Docker logs or whatever. It's everything inside GBM. And then Postgres, uh, Postgres appeared. It's a special case, it's a special, the special guy of the, of the class because Postgres uses JDBC uh, connection chain and that JDBC connection chains does not use PEM files, use PKCS8 files, which is a different way to um, parse a certificate which we have not implemented in that moment. And as long as we have no method to parse from pen to PKCS8, we decided to iterate. We iterate with a first approach, which is not good at all. I told you, I tell you, but it's our first approach, that is, Spark has a script that is called SparkEnv, and that script lets you 
mm, do things before you start your process. That's not good because it writes a lot of logs and it's quite bad in order to, to be secured. And we started with, with OpenSSL, that is a system library, to parse that certificate from PEM2, PKCS. But it's a bot, really, it's so bad. And nowadays, we have um, create a new method to parse from PAM to PKCS8, and we provide this secret, this secret in the same way that the secrets that you have seen. It's another property that you can use, but it's in another format. And in a future approach, in a further improvement, we want to provide an SSL socket factory that we are working on it, but uh, it's, it's not necessary. It's just another way to, to interact with Postgres, but I th we think that is quite interesting. So now about network isolation. Well, uh, before I started with network isolation, I want to put uh, something more about what, uh, what Marco says. It's cool, it's not bad, sorry. But he, he forgets one thing. In this code that uh, we are showing, okay, uh, we are talking about elastic, but in the, in the, pre, in the process slate, we saw uh, the, the code with Kafka. Why? Because the code is exactly the same. The properties is exactly the same. So any new technology that comes with TLS uh, and using uh, GKE's uh, uh, format from the files were, co were covered. What happened? The main trick with Postgres is that uh, this is not allowed, and we have to do all the all the things that that Marco has explained. Sorry for the intervention. And we came with uh, with all of this. Okay, network isolation. What happened with when we accomplish all of this? That we say we think, okay, our cluster is now secure. We think the that the process is is totally secure because the because all of what we have done uh, uh, are secure, the, communica the communication are secure, we don't uh, spend any token, we cannot, uh, the secret that we generate, as Marcos has said, is inside the Java virtual machine, so anything is, uh, is there, all is cool. But what happened with, we came with a particular use case that is called uh, data scientists. Data scientists have to have access from their computer to the cluster inside, so we open it a, a way to open cells inside of cluster, and we have uh, this particular use case. So let's put that we are this guy, we are some regular guy that want to launch any Spark application that reads from a Kerberos uh, HDFS. It's, a, it's run its own application, communicate with the Spark Static Spark Dispatcher that will run a Spark, a Spark driver and a Spark executor will interact itself and with HDFS. But what happened with is some bad guy, this guy right here, uh, want to, to launch a process that is cannot be done with the, with this backdoor that that have been done, that have been open. Okay. With this hat process, as he is inside of cluster, he is not is not also able to communicate with HDFS because he's inside of cluster. Uh, is also able to com uh, intercept all the communications, okay? If we put some, some effort or whatever. So what, uh, what happened with this? We can, the Stadia security team comes with, in with integration between ESDEN and Mesos. So we have now software definition network. And what, uh, what this approach to us, <coughs> sorry, what this approach gives to us that we can create uh, several isolated virtual networks uh, profiling by no bad kind of user, no bad, no bad project. Uh, I think we can, we, we can make only, <coughs> sorry, uh, a virtual network for the user Marcos that only access to HDFS and another one for me, uh, user Jorge, that access to HDFS and Elastic or whatever. Why? Because my user is better than, than than him because I'm uh, than him, so so yeah, I'm older and and say it, not you. So okay, uh, we can do this this profiling of user or at any project or or whatever. And one important one very important thing is that uh, these software definition networks doesn't add any limitation to the mesh architecture. Why I put this in? In, in knowledge, because the first approach was using a static resource, 
So one project has only a, 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 a concrete amount of resources for our cluster. This is not quite good. This is something that we have to eliminate because we want mesos elasticity. So we added this, this new cool uh, functionality. Okay, so happy face. We can assign, assign just the resource needed by each user and mesos still have this awesome elasticity. Okay, the same, the same process. Uh, the same guy launched uh, the same application that we read. Okay, we put two different uh, uh, boxes here. Why? Because as I've said before, Spark driver are Mesos framework. So when we started the Mesos framework, Mesos master start communication with the Mesos framework in a random port that we cannot we cannot uh, secure uh, securize. Pardon, sorry. And this network has to has access to this to this particular uh, component of our architecture. But the executor doesn't talk with the Mesos master at all. Okay, so Spark driver has uh, has access to the data store, the executor, and the Mesos master. And Spark executor only have access to the data store and the Spark driver. So the communication is still good. No, it is not. Uh, is the same. We don't have any problem. So. What happened if, the, if we if something lands an <coughs> a, pro, a, a hacking process? That as we have uh, this new network isolation, this this hacker cannot access to HDFS because it will be profiling in order to only to have access for the proper user or virtual networks. And of course, they don't have access to the communication between executor and data stores, or the driver and executor, or the driver and data store. So, with all of in mind, we think that our cluster is quite secure. And we we are quite sure of this that we are going to make a live demo right now with our product. Please, uh, write for us that all all work well. <laughs> And Marcos will will be the one in uh, doing the, the demo. If you have to tape, you can you can hold the mic. So first of all, Marcos is going to show you the 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 cluster that we are going to use for the demo. If I can find it. If if he can find it, <laughs> okay. This is our cluster. Okay. I As can see this is DCOS, and well, what we have here is a little cluster with 200 shares and one terabyte of RAM. We have a Spark Dispatcher already deployed, okay, which has its own network, which is somewhere uh, beneath, beneath. above, beneath, yeah. here. Uh, okay, so here you can see that the ne Dispatcher network is Spark, okay, which of course have access to the Mesos Master. Now we're gonna run. Uh, a job. Now he was going to show you the proper uh, web request that we have to launch in order to access to, a, to an HDFS, I think. Yes. yes, just something important. We have also authentication because we are going through admin router. So we have uh, to log in first using OAuth. And maybe the cookie that is inside this script has been revoked. So maybe this fails, but don't worry because it's controlled. Maybe don't, because the cookie has not expired. The cookie is of Schrodinger. So here we have the job that must be able to read from HDFS. HDFS. So first of all, let's take a look, look on, on it. Here you can see what we have talked about. We have to find some, some properties, OK, which I'm trying to find. This is our, our version of Spark. And here you can find some security options. You can see that we have the Spark Secret Bolt role, which is the one that's, that is able to interact with Bolt. Here you can see the Mesos principal and the Mesos secret, which is uh, the, 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 the principal is the one that is going to be able to run uh, frameworks and applications inside uh, Mesos. We have the role, and we have the networks. This network that is not maybe quite readable, has no access to PSQL, 
but has access to HDFS. So let's run this script. Hopefully, the cookie is still valid. Just to point it, uh, you can see uh, this script is for a, uh, for a Python application, OK? Yeah. So the driver engine 44 has been launched. It's over here. And as you can see, it has been able to, to read from ATFS. Here's the record of a guy of our company. And right now we are going to try to, to do the same with a virtual network that doesn't allow access to HDFS. Yeah, because as you can see, we have here a, dif dif uh, a different uh, network which has different Calico policies that don't allow this driver to access HDFS, so it must fail. Uh, another point of view, uh, you can see in the bottom of the, of the request that we only share the Mm, the path. bold path, never the secret itself, okay? Yeah, the only thing that the user needs to know is where the secrets are stored. That maybe an administrator or something like that can tell, he, can tell him, okay, I let the secrets be at this path, and he, could, he can reference it. So, the driver has worked, is the number 45, is submitted, and when it decides that the timeout has come, it will fail. When will that happen? No one knows. Well, we hope soon. Let's, let's go with Postgres. Uh, I, I will skip the, the part of the, some part of the, of the cure. I will show you only the, the important things for TLS. So here you can see that this, uh, this is a Scala application. Here we refer to the, the jar and so on. And here you see the, this is the one that allows to access to PSQL, so has a policy that only the, is denying the access to HDFS. We have the same secrets, but we have different paths, okay? We have the paths for the uh, interaction with TLS data store. It's always the same, it's always the key pass, the third pass, the third path, and the same from the, for the trust store. So if we run this, okay, driver is 46. The other one, let's see it before. Okay, as you can see, the driver launched without permission to read from HDFS have failed, and the one that we have just run the 46 with access to Postgres has ended successfully. So now let's see the driver that has no permissions for HDFS. For Postgres, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. So this one has no access to PSQL. And this will, this will take a little bit, but this will fail, okay? I want to show you first that you can see here, if you find for it, if you look for it, sorry. Well, no, not this one. We are not interested in jars. Okay, sorry, let's start. So if, if I can show you this, it will be interesting. Here's the, here's the network parameter, which is Spark no PSQL, which is the Calico network that we have defined with the policy to deny the access to PSQL. And the service, that is already running because it has a long time out, will fail. Okay, we are pretty sure of that. Okay, just uh, to point uh, all of you, uh, in this in this log, uh, also we can show something. Okay, all of these properties, okay, are now part of the SparkConf properties. This is not, um, this is, doesn't 
it's not secure, doesn't print any properties that have something like password or whatever, please, this is your, your accomplice as a, a developer. But we want to show you that even we didn't put any of these, is these properties inside of our web uh, request, we have all this information. And all of this happened in a transparent way for the, for the developer. And I think it's very cool. And something that doesn't, <laughs> we doesn't say is that all of this, uh, we, we came with benchmark and doesn't add any, 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 uh, any delays. Yeah. This is the guy that ran this benchmark. But <laughs> Of course, it has some impact, but it's something that you can depreciate because it's not important. It's in um, lower magnitude than we expected. And so, well, now, mm, mm, while this is finishing, uh, we would like to ask you for questions. If something is not pretty clear or you want something to be asked, it's the time. And you will have an awesome t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? No one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They told me that I need to give you the microphone, so. <laughs> uh, whoa. Um, great presentation. Can you talk a little bit more about how you do the SDN? Yeah. You mean about the SDN? Yeah. yeah. Uh, is the end. We are t we are using Calico now because Calico give us uh, a lot of power when we are talking about security policies. It had a huge and a massive way to define ACLs, and that's the reason that we choose Calico. Uh, SDN is important to us because we have tons of processes inside our cluster. We have business intelligence tools. We have processing tools. We have data stores. So we need to isolate that things without a huge impact in our core architecture. I mean, I don't want to say, okay, agent one is for business intelligence and agent two and three is for, for, for processing. We want to get over that and we use it uh, SDNs. That is a cool way to uh, isolate uh, containers. Is that a good option? Thank you. Thank you. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, any question? Nothing more? Okay. So, was, so nice to thank you for coming. And yeah. Thank you for coming. This is the slide uh, mandatory for our company. If we want to be part of this Epson team, please uh, send us an email with your curriculum and we try to help you. So, thank you for coming and enjoy the conference. Thank you.